Hello crafty friends, welcome to another In Our Ink Pad series. So far we have talked about different types of ink pads. We have blended with ink, swiped with ink, smushed and splattered, lifted and stamped. Today we're going to be looking at printing and specifically gel printing. If you've ever tried gel printing with acrylics, you may have found them a bit of a pain to clean up. It's quite a messy technique. You might also have found the results a little bit overwhelming, or you might love it. Either way, distress oxides are an alternative to acrylics when it comes to gel printing. And one of the big bonuses of using distress oxides on a gel plate is that they're really easy to clean up. In the first part of this video, I'm going to show you a few gel printing with ink pad techniques. Then I'll make a card for you. And at the end of the video, I will show you some more cards that I've made with the gel prints that we make today. The first thing we're going to look at is simple, straightforward blending of colours on a gel plate. So I've got saltwater taffy distress oxide there and squeeze lemonade. Put them on either end of the gel plate and now I'm going to take a brayer and smooth out the colour going up and down where the two colours meet and then bringing it down like that and now I've got a piece of smooth white cardstock here I'll prop that on and take a bit of scrap paper and press down my cardstock onto my gel plate. I do have a whole series on gel printing, so if you want more detail than I'm going to give you in this video, then do check out that series. I'll leave a link in the video description. You can also find it via my channel page and the playlists tab. So there we have a lovely saltwater taffy and squeezed lemonade blendy panel. Now I can put this back on here. I find that less is more when it comes to adding distress oxides to my gel plate. If I put too much down, it can bead up and give a beaded appearance. But if I put as little down as I think I can get away with, then I get a better finish. So I've just added ink again to my plate, popped a stencil on top, and now I'm going to press that down, pushing quite hard, making sure to get paper to contact the ink. If you use a thinner paper, it might be easier to get that contact. I'm just using regular cardstock. So now I've got that nice blend between the two colours, but through a stencil. I can take this off and pick up any residual ink on another piece of card. So now a very pale pattern. So this was the ink that was hidden under the stencil when I pulled that print. So that's basic blending and pulling prints through a stencil. For my next colour, I'm going to use picked raspberry and do the whole panel in picked raspberry. Spread that out with the brayer. Drop some of that colour off because I can still see some beading. So I'm going to give it another roll and again like that. And now I'm going to use some stamps. I've got some photopolymer butterfly stamps here. And I put them on an acrylic block and I'm going to press them down onto my gel plate and when I lift it up that should have lifted off some ink. So there we have a lifted stamped image. I will put some squeezed lemonade back on here. 
I haven't cleaned my brayer, so that squeezed lemonade is going to mix with whatever ink was on my brayer. And there should be some pink ink on there, which I can put, hopefully, on here. And I think I'll use this very light print to pick up what's there. So there you can see that the butterflies have been stamped in pink. I think I must have wiggled the stamp a little because it's got a bit of a white halo around the outside where I smeared the ink, but I quite like that, so that's fine. I am going to clean my brayer because I'm going to switch colour families now. I'm going to go to green next. And I think I'll clean my gel plate as well to see how easy it is to clean. Just a damp baby wipe or a damp cloth and you're all sorted. I do dry the gel plate in between. And now some bundled sage. And to make marks in this print, I'm going to put this embossing folder on top. And use this a bit like a stamp and pick up some leaf shapes. So now I've got some lovely leafy shapes for my print there. I could use the ink that's left on my embossing folder by popping some card in and running it through my die cutting machine. That way I'll get some embossed green leaves. And I'm going to do a little bit more with some vintage photo. And I've got this rubber stamp that has a kind of grungy brickwork pattern on it. And I'm going to stamp that on here. There you go, a vintage photo brickwork pattern. And of course, as we've done in the previous videos in this series, you can use found objects to make marks in your gel prints. I've got here a bottle of Nouveau Drops and I'm quite curious to see if I can get a pattern with the sort of crystal on the top there. So I'll just press that in a few places. You've got to be careful not to use sharp objects because that will damage your gel plate. Not really getting the crystal, maybe there. It's, it's there in a few places. So I've got this pot of luscious powder here, which has a flat lid on it, but it's got a little dimple in it. So I'm going to carefully use that and see what we get. There, so some subtle circles with a little dimple in the middle. So I've put some bundled sage back on here. I'm going to add this stencil and then I'm going to get a bit more green, a different green and add some to my brayer like this and roll over the stencil. Still got a bit of ink from when we did the first stencil technique, but that's okay. We can pop that on. Actually, no, we won't. What we'll do is we'll take that off, add that on there and see what we get. If you want to know more about using stencils, I do have a 25 ways to use your stencils in card making video and I will leave a link to that in the video description. So there we have the dark green hexagons with some bundled sage in between instead of the white. Pop that on there, press that down, we're able to get some of that ink from the stencil to transfer onto the plate. of a different hexagon look some very pale green in the middle with that lucky clover and bundled sage peering through one thing to know is when you roll your inky brayer over something like a stencil that has a raised texture some of that pattern will transfer to the brayer and when you roll it off you'll be able to see a subtle pattern so I hope you can see there that there is some hexagons there in the background. Distress oxides aren't the only inks to work on a gel plate. The Catherine Pooler inks will work as well. 
So there's a bit of sea foam there and a bit of Fiesta blue. Again, you just roll them out, go up and down, that way, that way, over the join to get a nice blend. These are translucent inks, so they will layer up differently to distress oxides. And you might find that some of the colours actually stain your gel plate, but don't worry about that. Uh, the staining won't come off on future projects or affect the performance of your gel plate in any way. There's a simple blue to green. You might not be able to see that in this light. I should have used a darker green. Let's do that. So we've got some Uptown, which is a green blue. And Fiesta blue again. So roll it out, up, down, up, down over the blend. I think it's probably all gone fiesta blue now. <laughs> so yeah, there's your uptown at that end and your fiesta blue. So you can get quite nice blending with the Catherine Pula inks as well. So I've got quite a few prints here. I probably won't use them all today, but in a moment I'll make a card for you using some of them and then show you some more cards at the end of the video that I've made with some of these prints. Okay, so to start with, I'm gonna work with these prints. I like the colors, I think they go together. They're not too bright or bold or in your face. We've got leaves, butterflies, circles and hexagons. And I've cut a piece of smooth white cardstock. It's actually quite thin, just thicker than copy paper really, with this stitched square die because I want to build up a, I guess, a pattern on here with these. But I'm then going to cut out again with this die. So I just wanted a little something there as a size guide, I suppose. And I think I'll patch them like that. To stick them down, I'll start with adding glue to this square. make sure all the edges are stuck down as well. Line that up on there where I want to make my cut. I think I want the hexagons to line up with the square. So there we have a little square of patched worked gel prints. I'm wondering about giving it a bold Matt, possibly something like that with the pink here and the yellow here kind of opposite to these two I quite like that actually I think we'll do that so I'll add glue to the back of this stick it on there and trim it out so my card blank is five by seven inches and I will stick this around about here so there's an equal size gap. Now I'm going to use this butterfly net die to cut out the net but what I really want are all the teeny tiny butterflies inside. I'm thinking this bolder more brighter piece of paper but we'll see once it's cut out. So we've got lots of little butterflies now and I'm thinking of having them fluttering across the panel here. Yeah, I quite like that. I think the colour works. I think they're bold enough, or not too bold. So I'll just dip them in a bit of tacky glue, wipe it off on my glass mat and add them.
For my sentiment, I've got Sending Love in a scripty font. I've got this stitch banner die that I'm going to use to cut it out. It's ever so slightly too long this banner, so I'm just going to shuffle it along a little bit until the teeth interlock and put it here so that when I cut it just the very end gets cut. So now that's the perfect size. So that will go on there like that but I want something else to go here, maybe a branch. I've cut two of these out of white cardstock and I'm going to layer them one on top of the other to give it a bit of dimension. And then add some glue onto the bottom one. I want to have my sentiment going over the branch so I'm going to need to pop the end that isn't over the branch up on a couple of bits of card to support it and keep everything level. I'm going to squeeze in a couple more butterflies, maybe one under there and one over here. Now I'm not sure what I've got there but I've got a blob of something so I will I think trim the bottom of the card off. No idea what that was or when it appeared I'm sure it wasn't there when I started. And to add a bit of gloss a bit of extra dimension I've got my white blizzard nouveau drops here and I'm going to add them onto these round leaves stroke berries stroke flowers whatever they're meant to be so this will dry clear but it's got a little bit of iridescent glitter in it so we'll give them a nice shine and a little bit of sparkle so that's today's card finished i do like the color scheme that we ended up with i think it's really bright and summery the pigeon agrees with me. There we go, he's finished now. Stick around for another minute and I will share some photographs of other cards that I've made with some of the gel prints that we've done today. I won't be using them all because there are far too many. The ones I don't use I will put in my box of bits and backgrounds and use another time. Do come back tomorrow for the next video in the series. We're going to be looking at a few different techniques, watercolouring, mixing inks with mediums, a whistle top tour of stenciling, as well as using ink pads with embossing folders and maybe a few other things as well. Right, thanks for joining me. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.